Everywhere I look, the PS5 is sold out. I follow Twitter accounts, Discord servers, subreddits to check if it's in stock, and even when I get close, I'm not close enough. There's a game I really want to play on PS5. I mean, how cool does Spider-Man look? But since it's basically close to impossible to get a console, I figured why wait? I'll just make a Spider-Man game myself. Big mistake. Turns out making your own Spider-Man game isn't the easiest thing to do. But I was working on it for a month, and it got a little better every day. I kept making improvements, and eventually ended up with something really cool. If you don't make games, you probably don't know how tough it is to find 3D models. So you could probably imagine my excitement when I found this actual model from the Spider-Man movie. Oh, did I mention it was free? I'm struggling to get Spider-Man walking like a normal person, so let's time jump a few hours. And thanks to the magic of jump cuts, I finally got him moving. But right now he's just a man, and he needs special wall climbing powers to become a Spider-Man. Okay, I have an idea for that. If I had an invisible trigger at the top of the block, it let Spider-Man know to stop climbing. Nice job! I'm struggling a little because there's so many animations in the PS5 game, and without a huge dev team like this, it's really up to me to find ways to cut corners, like using free animations made by the cool people at Mixable, or repurposing models, thanks Anthony, like this one, so Spider-Man can climb an actual building. Okay, enough chit chat, let's add web swinging. It took some time, but tell me this isn't the best web swinging you've ever seen. Right, it needs a lot of work. I wrote a good amount of code changes, and after adding a few buildings, it's starting to look a lot better. I just can't help but notice that all the buildings look like a sea of yellow, and getting new building models is expensive. Thankfully, changing colors is free. And check this out, it's actually starting to look like a city. Maybe not as nice as a real city, but come on, the game's looking a lot better than before. It's crazy to think this game and this one are the difference of a couple weeks. And since the PS5's still out of stock, there's still plenty to do towards my game in the meantime, starting off with adding more buildings. And I also couldn't resist recording free-falling footage. There's really so much to do to make a city feel like a city. And to make my city really feel alive, it needs people, and I want them scared. It's actually a good reason why I want scared people. Basically my idea is that a Spider-Man villain's attack in the city, and everyone's running away until Spider-Man shows up. But to make this work, I need to have a believable Spider-Man villain. You know, preferably one that's free and without the ice cream cone. Here's a fun game. Guess which Spider-Man villain I ended up using. I kind of spoiled it earlier, but I managed to find this really great Green Goblin model. I gave Green Goblin's board a smoke trail, and used Unity's built-in nav mesh AI, so he'll annoyingly follow you everywhere. I'm not even kidding. If I jump, you'll see. There he is, right behind me. Even though he's annoying, he's not dangerous. So let's add bombs. I love this scene in the 2002 movie, and I knew I wanted equally awesome pumpkin bombs. Big shout out to Solo Penko for making it. I wrote a few lines of code, and now the game has functional bombs. Even though I can get really nice footage, this isn't much of a game, so I added a health system and started the game's main mission. I tried working out the best way to make a checkpoint system. Originally I wanted the directions to be in your face, but it was pretty intrusive, so I made the minimap direct you to the checkpoint. And when Spider-Man gets there, Green Goblin just uh, sort of shows up. So let's make that better with Cinemachine. It's a tool that makes it easy to create really cool cutscenes. So now Green Goblin can arrive in style. And while I was at it, I figured I might as well add an opening cutscene too. Looking good, Spider-Man. Okay, now I need to figure out how Spider-Man actually beats Green Goblin and wins the game. I'm thinking power generators. I colored them green like Green Goblin and made them destructible. My idea is that four generators are arbitrarily placed around the city. With the help of a green marker, Spider-Man needs to destroy all of them to power down Goblin's board. But hold up, I just got an alert that PS5s are in stock. Great. Looks like I'm not abandoning my Spider-Man game just yet. This might actually be a good time to do something I've never done before. Voice acting. Don't have too much of me, but I think it adds a little immersion to the game. Green Goblin. I better destroy the power generators to disable his board. The game's getting close to done, so I tried adding a rigid body when Spider-Man dies. Okay, so I ditched that idea for an animation, and dying's actually working now. Is it bad I get a real satisfaction out of watching him die? I was excited the game was done and tried testing it out, but I realized you can't actually beat the game. There's no end scene. Let's fix that with a quick cutscene, showing Goblin's board powering down. And I had a funny idea for a windscreen when you beat the game. 
I bet you didn't know Spider-Man could dance like that. Although some of you might be familiar with this. My game may not be as fancy as the PS5 games, but given it was just a team of me, I thought it came out really cool. But seriously, if you know how to get a PS5 at retail price, let me know. Anyway, if you didn't dislike this video, consider liking and subscribing. And thanks so much for watching.